Hi guys, this is Miss Clark Does Science. Today we're carrying on with cells and the movement across cell membranes and we're going to move on to looking at what differentiation is in cells and why it happens in multicellular organisms to become adapted to certain functions and we're going to be using four examples today just to demonstrate this. Now this word differentiation, basically what it means is where what we saw before where our animal cell turns into one of these types of cells. Because as humans, as organisms, if you are multicellular, which means you have lots of different types of cells, we have different cells to do different functions. And we need our animal cell, our bog standard animal cell, to become these different cells, to do these different functions. Okay, the reason why we have lots of different types of cells is basically for efficiency. So it's all about being more efficient because if you have lots of different types of cells being doing different jobs, then that's more efficient than having one cell doing everything. It's a little bit like delegating in a lot of jobs. You wouldn't just have uh, one builder who made a whole house. You'd have a guy that did cement. You'd have a guy that did electrics, all sorts of things. So we'll get straight into some of the different examples then. So some of the different types of cells that have become specialised to functions are some of these here. This one on the left here, this is called a sperm cell. Uh, next to that is a muscle cell, a type of muscle cell. Over here is a type of nerve cell, so in your brain. And over here, you've probably seen this one multiple times, it is a red blood cell. Now they might ask you about the different adaptations that these cells have to perform their functions and it is useful to know. So with this sperm cell, one of the first adaptations that it has is this big long tail and the function of this is basically to swim fast because sperm cells have to travel into the uterus of females and they have to get to the egg so they have to swim far. Another thing that they have is this kind of narrowing of the head at the top. So it has a narrow head, and this is to make it easier to burrow into the egg. In reproductive science, you will learn that the sperm cells have to burrow into the egg to actually fertilise it all. So that's what some of their adaptations. The muscle cells then, so they are long and thin. And this means that there's lots of space to contract because the job of a muscle cell is to contract our muscles. Okay, uh, an adaptation of a nerve cell again is that it is long, just like the muscle cell. It's long because it needs to transmit signals over longer distances. One of your longest nerves actually goes right down to your toes. Okay, in your legs, it's called the sciatic nerve. Okay, so lastly but not least is the red blood cell, and an adaptation of this cell is that it has no nucleus, and that is to maximise space for oxygen, because that is the job of red blood cell. They want to carry oxygen around the body so that we can use it in different places, maximise space for oxygen.